you know this thing right i don't know who made this but that person surely made the world a better place at least the online world now if you try showing this thing to a bird animal or anything other than human being they are not going to understand it because there is no language for communication between them so how does a computer understand it because there is a language for communication between them so this thing looks like this for a computer yeah the sequence of zeros and one that's it nothing more nothing less not just smiles and emojis it's all the digital data that is present out there all your images voice text numbers every single thing so next time if you think you are capturing a photo your computer is capturing a sequence of zeros and ones recently i was getting a lot of request on making a video about program so this video is dedicated to all those lovely people and i'm 100% sure once you watch this video till the end you will have a different point of view in this world of programming so we were talking about language for communication look your computer doesn't understand voice text images videos anything at all all it understands is a sequence of zeros and ones that's it only two choices and it's so beautiful when you think about the only two choices are helping us to get to the mars to explore the cosmos and all the wonderful things that we are doing so just like we start teaching kids about numbers and alphabets similarly our job as humans is to teach computer what the numbers means what is this alphabet how can you compute something let's talk numbers it's normal for us when we talk about numbers but not for the computer so we need to have a system so that a computer can understand what's 1 what's 2 or what's 3 or what's even 1,22,469 and without a surprise we created such system it's called as binary system what we are using is decimal number system so binary system basically knows how to map the decimal numbers into sequence of zeros and one. for 1 for 2 for 3 or for any number at all we can create a sequence of zeros and ones that will represent those numbers so this is how first 10 numbers in decimal system looks in binary now we know how computer sees numbers but what about the text what about the letters again without a surprise we made a system for that too it's called as ascii character system and not just the alphabet we have mapped the numbers to the specific symbols too now we have a text So from text we can grab individual letter and for each individual letter we have a number and as we discussed earlier for each number we can create a sequence of zeros and ones through a specific formula but that's not the complete world right this world just about text and numbers what about images what about the videos let's talk about it each image is nothing but the collection of pixels each pixel can be made from a color any color can be made from a combination of three primitive colors that is red green and blue if you give them specific values we have our colors these values are without a surprise in numbers and we know numbers to binary is a possible thing okay so that's about images now what about video this video is 30 fps means 30 frames per second so in each second you are seeing 30 images and now we know how to convert images into sequence of zeros and ones do it 30 times in 1 second and you will have a sequence of zeros and ones for your video basically we created a binary system through which we can convert the decimal numbers into sequence of zeros and ones so we converted image into numbers we converted text into numbers we converted video into numbers too and after that numbers to binary is a simple thing now we have created everything to let the computer understand what we are talking about like what are the images what are the videos or what is a text every single thing but it's the data only how can computer make sense of data do something with it perform any operations with it how it's possible did you wonder how zeros and ones are created i mean they are not just appearing magically right we are creating it but how transistors If you don't know about transistors you should how transistor works is a case of physics so i won't get into the details i will put the links to the some of the reference videos so that you can watch it later for now just remember transistor acts as a switch so what does this mean so transistor decides whether current is flowing through a circuit or not that's it if the switch of transistor is open we call it zero and if it's closed we call it one basically this zero and one this on and off this true and false decide whether the electrons are flowing 
through a circuit or not that's the basis of it so this is all about physics but when we combine this physics with the maths we get a logic when we connect these transistors in a specific order we can get a logical output depending upon the input likewise if we start combining them in a certain way in a more complex and a logical manner then we can make them add to numbers but a simple adder will only perform two bit addition i mean the addition of 0 0 plus 0 1 or 1 0 plus 1 1 this kind of stuff but if we keep on adding these adders we keep on making a bigger circuit using this adder we can make them perform addition of larger number so that's why we call it the 8 bit adder 16 bit adder likewise but that's just about adders if we keep on improving the quality of a circuit the kind of output it is providing we can make them do multiplication division and subtraction too so next time you type 2 plus 3 this is where it will get performed in this tiny little circuit of a chip so this tiny little circuits that we are using to perform arithmetic operations like addition subtraction multiplication division anything at all it's called arithmetic logic unit the logic used in arithmetic logic unit is called as combinational logic there is a reason behind it because we are combining zeros and ones into a specific output so now our computer knows how to compute using all those transistor thing all of those arithmetic logical unit adders and every single thing so it's basically a controlled chaos you can call alu as a controlled chaos thing switches are going on and off and then you are finally getting your output but what about the memory how a computer knows which programs are running where they are stored now we use combinational logic in our alu that's arithmetic logic unit for memory we also have a logic it's called sequential logic so what's this sequential logic as we are talking about memory i have one question for you what do you do to recall a certain thing from your memory obviously you go to the past where that particular thing happened so whatever that is stored in your memory is backwards in time so that's the basic of it obviously you don't have a memory of future events you only have the memory that has happened in the past so this is that idea which gave us the sequential logic don't focus on these fancy terms yet just think about what's the concept behind it so now how to get this logic into a computer so we created a thing called as flip flop before you let your imagination wander it's not this thing it is this all it does is remembering what was the previous input provided to it so i will give you a real life example so consider you are sitting with your friend now you have three pens with you a blue pen a black pen and the third special kind of pen okay you have given a blue pen to your friend so in your memory what do you have which pen have you given you have given the blue pen so it was the input of a previous time period right so you were giving a blue pen that was the input and that was you remembered similarly next time you give a black pen you will remember what was the latest thing that you give to them obviously the black pen because that was the latest input so that's what a flip-flop does it just remembers what was the previous input provided so flip-flop is a basic thing but we made certain changes to it and we built a register what comes to your mind when you think about register maybe a long hardcover notebook you use to store your information so that's right that's the basic concept of register it just stores information but register can store only a one bit of value not more than that and that's too low too low considering our current standards but register are very small and that's a big advantage for us so when we put these millions of register in one single thing we can store a lot of value right we call this thing by a familiar name it's called ram so we knew how memory worked and from that we created a flip-flop we made flip-flop a little advanced we created a register we combined this tiny register into one single thing that thing is called as ram so we have something which can store the values now our computer can get input process data store data and give an output but hey here's the catch it's only possible when you talk to a computer in a sequence of zeros and ones if you tell the computer give me two plus three it's not going to answer anything you will have to provide two and three in binary values so we need an automatic way so when we type two plus three all of those things will automatically get converted into sequence of zeros and ones so that computer will get its input it will process data it will store data and give you the output that is five so now we are from how electrons were flowing 
to the world of programming languages the most fundamental reason of creating this programming language was to create this sequence of zeros and ones in a human understandable way so how this english looking code is converted into sequence of zeros and ones so that our boy computer can understand it so this is a process from this to get this and we use a tool for that it's called compiler so now we have went from the transistor creating zeros and ones to writing this sequence of zeros and ones in a human understandable way that's the english language now if you know english language it's totally up to you which programming language you choose to feed these zeros and ones to a computer we have contender like javascript java python c c++ ruby there are a lot languages present out there everyone has its pros and cons these languages helps us create algorithms to build applications software games and what not all of this fancy stuff that we talked about this programming languages is a high level stuff we often forget what's happening at the lowest level the comment that you type the like you are going to give the subscribe button every single thing is presented in zeros and ones so if you want to start learning programming start from first principle So this is the list of some topics you should know about before jumping into the world of programming. We have transistors, we have electrons, we have transistor as a switch, we have logic circuits, we have the ALU, but first please learn about transistors. So when we talk about this programming languages, we think about how we build software using them, how we create this encryption algorithms, how uh, people hack certain things. All of these things, these are just high level stuff. but you need to know whatever going on behind that chip behind your computer and that's what this video was all about i hope this video helped you in a certain way and if it did let me know in the comment section or wherever you want to reach me linkedin quora i'm i'm all there till then i wish you all the very best in your journey to learn programming and this won't be my last video i'll be putting out more videos regarding programming apart from my lifestyle and any other educational videos